document uh, for you to, to review. And it is, it's very much a work in progress and uh, my interpretation of what I heard. Um, and it's really for council to give direction now on where you would like to go from here. Um, if I could just make a couple of suggestions, I think what, what would be really helpful for your staff and I is to hear from you if you want to continue down the path of a high level document, uh, very high level, that just um, indicates your um, key overarching strategic priorities for your term of office. Um, or if you would like to proceed down a path where you develop a, a full-blown uh, strategic plan with vision, mission, values, strategic directions, uh, goals, objectives, actions, tactics, um, which is a, an alternative route. So deciding that is really uh, fundamental to you know, giving direction to us. And then if you um, decide you're going to continue down a path of a high level document, which then takes you into some uh, detailed processes around capital planning and implementation of the city plan, then I think give, uh, if you could give us some direction about the content. Um, you've got a draft in front of you, what works, what doesn't work, what do you want less of, what do you want more of, what have we missed? So if you could give us some direction about that, that would be great. Thank you. I'm just wondering if we could have the draft put up so people could see. Is that possible? So maybe if council could have a discussion, first of all, if they're comfortable with this high level approach and That's give some direction about that, that'd be great. Sure. And if, if you do decide to continue on with this approach, then maybe we could actually walk through the document section by section and you could give us some direction. Okay, I have a speaker list starting with Councillor Geselbrecht, then Councillor Thorpe, then Councillor Perino. Okay. I think um, this document uh, can work uh, with some adjustments um, as a high level document and you know main purposes communicating to the public uh, you know what this council is going to be focusing on. Um, I think that uh, you know maybe using some goal language on you know what what each area what what are we trying to achieve by focusing on them. Um, I think I'd also like to put um, the part about the implementation of the city action plans and key city man about the OCP, put that uh, in sort of the number one position and expand it so that the uh, you know goals uh, of the OCP are, are clearly articulated of, of what we're going to focus on. Um, and that can be used as a platform for you know going much more in depth in the next few months on the specifics of it. Where's my screen? And I think also to uh, looking at, um, you know, if capital planning needs to be a separate thing that's understood, are there some items maintaining and growing current services? Does that fit under the OCP um, plan? Uh, and does it necessitate its own uh, category? Uh, I think that's something, you know, what can be collapsed underneath that that number one bullet of the OCP uh, would be a suggestion that I would have just to avoid redundancy. Um, and I think, you know, if council can look at this as, you know, the, the public facing document of, of communicating what we're going to do and focus on. And I also think that, um, you know, to hear more from staff, some clarity on just in terms of uh, uh, order of operations, what are some key decisions that they need to hear in depth on of, of what we need to discuss so that we can, you know, move forward with the rest. So if, if committees are something that we need to have a discussion on and make some decision on because there's other things downstream they're holding up um, with the capital planning, if hearing, you know, a bit more in detail, what are the specifics? Um, I know that there's some, uh, elements that are listed here of capital projects that we want to focus on, um, but to have more in-depth conversation now, uh, this, this session or, uh, you know, at a future date, really outlining, you know, realistically, 
what is this council willing to do financially, um, invest in, in, in what's, how many projects we can take on at once, both financially and just with capacity. Um, I think that that conversation uh, probably still needs to happen. And then um, if around communications, specifically what do we mean around that, I, uh, there's some general statements, but you know, just flagging it and then are there some important decision points? I'm just, what are the important decision points that staff need to hear from us uh, to get out of the way so that we can move forward with everything else? Thank you. Councillor Thorpe, Reno, then Manley. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, and thank you, Ms. Habkirk, for your work on um, producing this document. I, I like it. I think it's a great starting point. Uh, my preference is to have something that's uh, fairly brief and fairly high level. And I like the way you've laid out um, your headings in this, as Councillor Gesselbrocht has uh, alluded to. Um, maintaining and growing current services, I think that's important because uh, that's our basic mandate, mandate is to provide uh, services to the community. So I think we need to uh, uh, focus on that. Um, social health and public safety challenges are, are I think, top of mind uh, for many citizens. I think uh, it's great that you've uh, referenced capital projects that council would like to see moved forward. And um, uh, I think communicating with the community uh, is, is a very important heading. And I think our work on committees uh, would relate to that general topic. And of course, we already have our detailed city plan, uh, which will remain in effect no matter what uh, other documents we come up with. So. Uh, you've referenced that as well, and it has action plans in it. So I like this as a general overview, uh, as long as we also uh, keep in mind that there are going to be financial and other challenges to, to achieving some of these uh, items. But uh, basically, I say uh, simplified uh, document, uh, general overview, and I like the areas that you've identified so far. Thank you. Councilor Prino. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you. I, I like the over, I, I like this document. It, it's, uh, my preference is the high level. So just to give you that, there are um, some pieces that are missing for me. I wish that we had some goal dates that we were working towards. I think some of the, in particular, some of the capital projects we might be able to get government grants for. So it, it you know, there's some things about, uh, obviously, the funding, which is a major concern, but they need to be certainly addressed. And I have two capital projects that I would like to see included in this list. Madam Chair, I don't know if you want me to mention that now or if you want me to save that and come okay. back to it. So the two, the two missing projects for me are of course One Port Drive and the walkway continued right down to, to Departure Bay. I think it's an exciting opportunity for us to work with the Sonoma First Nations and the Port Authority. And I think those were two projects that the public said to me on a regular basis that they wanted to see. And I think we need to begin working towards having those goals presented to the public and, and looking at opportunities of, you know, what, whether it's government funding, with joint funding, it, there's all sorts of things. So it's an exciting time for us, I think. Thank you. Councillor Manley, then Hammonds. Thank you, Chair. Um, I also, like, I appreciate what's been put together so far. I would like to see a, a high-level document as well, just keep it to high level. And I agree with uh, Councillor Gesselbrock that, that on the top of that should be implementing the city plan because I think that's guiding us in the, in the work uh, going forward. And we'll see action plans and work plans coming out of, out of that document. I think it's important to reference, you know, maintaining services and growing services based on, on the city growth because we are uh, a, a growing community and uh, we're seeing more demand for services and more demand for um, amenities. Um, and we're going to have an increased demand for, for infrastructure and replacing aging infrastructure for a, a city that's been, um, that's very spread out. Um, and, and has had uh, very interesting growth patterns in the past along the coast. Um, the social health and public safety are, are really important to the community. People uh, want to see us do, you know, partnering with senior levels of government and doing something about um, uh, social infrastructure that's lacking in, in the community. 
and creating all kinds of other uh, issues, including public safety issues. Um, I'm gonna agree with Councillor Perino. I'd like to see in the uh, capital plan, uh, the waterfront walkway uh, as part of that plan and one port drive. And I think, you know, there's uh, significant uh, opportunities there to be working with uh, Sanamo First Nation uh, to implement some, some cultural uh, aspects to that, the whole walkway to one port drive. There's the, uh, there's a lot of potential there for a cultural center that could include some of the other things that people have been asking for in the community, like a new art gallery or new, uh, theater spaces or, you know, a cultural center that's really, uh, keyed in, uh, with Nanaimo that's, uh, and working with Nanaimo on, on ensuring that, um, our waterfront and their, uh, their sacred sites, the, their culturally significant sites and former village sites are recognized uh, as part of, the, part of that in infrastructure as we go forward. Mm -hmm. um, with the capital projects, we, we do have things listed on here and this is where communication is gonna be really important because we do have needs for a growing community and um, taxpayers don't get excited about the idea of, uh, um, you know, another fire hall uh, until we have a, a major wildfire and an interface fire that destroys part of the community. And then they're going to wonder where, where was the planning, you know, to, to be prepared for these kind of uh, urgent situations. People aren't interested in seeing more police and a growing police station if they think that it's just going to be for traffic enforcement. But, um, you know, people are, are now seeing that if they're feeling unsafe in the community, then they want a larger police presence and, and um, uh, strategies around dealing with public safety. And the same could be sa you know, said with the Nanaimo Operations Center, which is the public works. People aren't gonna be excited about building new uh, garages until we have an earthquake and, and the uh, old brick structure falls down on a, one of our fire trucks uh, when we need it in, in uh, an emergency situation and then they're going to be asking where was the planning how come you didn't uh, think about these things and um, so w communicating why we need th this other infrastructure developing a plan around uh, how we're going to pay for this uh, how it's going to be implemented isn't necessarily part of this document but communicating to the public that uh, we do have these needs and we are going to to need to plan for the future, for the shortcomings that we already have. Those are, um, you know, it, it's key that we do continue to uh, really communicate well with the public about uh, what we're doing about growth, managing growth, and uh, ensuring that um, we're ready for anything. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Councilor Hammonds. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Ms. Habkirk, for this. Um, I agree with my colleagues. I, my preference is for a high-level document. Um, I believe when the action plans for city plan come forward, we're going to have opportunities for a deeper dive in those actual, like those, that specificity. So for this, I, I really appreciate the high level. Personally, I would probably remove the we commit to sections. I find them a bit weak, with the exception of capital. And in the capital planning section, I agree with Councillor Perino, um, it's imperative that we add one port drive and the waterfront walkway with the, um, uh, with the understandings that Councillor Manley has laid out really well. Um, I think, oh, and, and to Councillor Gesselbrock's point about putting uh, city plan as number one, I would also agree with. So general agreement uh, would probably trim a bit of the language. Thank you, Chair. No other speakers, so I'll say my two cents. I too like just a plain, simple document. I've worked with these most of my career and they very rarely ever get referred to other than this is the priority and then staff knows and they, they do their plans like that. I agree with uh, Councillor Hemmons. I don't think we should have the week commit to because for me, the first thing I saw on the, uh, oh, sorry, social uh, health and public challenges, we didn't even talk about crime. We talked about homelessness, that's it. And crime is our number one issue from the public. It's not homelessness, it's the crime. So I think if we, we, we get rid of that, I think that would make difference because we only talk about downtown once again. Um, as to capital projects, 
I, I, I believe that number one port drive is being looked at by the POG and I believe that's where it needs to stay until those agreements come forward with SFN at the POG and then, then we can look at it at a later date. I don't think we are there yet. Uh, as to the uh, walkway, I think the cost is almost doubled or tripled since we first looked at it, which would be close to probably what 60, 70 million minimum for a place where there's not even parking for people to go down to to park their cars to walk the parkway, so that's, or the walkway, which is an issue for me, as well as the king tides. I see Vancouver's looking at closing parts of their walkways because of the issues. Um, I believe we need to look at what we're contractually obligated to do in capital projects, which is the RCMP. It's in the contract that they must have a proper detachment, so I think we need to look at that. I think we definitely need a new uh, operational center. I mean, the rats that run through that building, the, the different heaters that they have to use, I think it's wrong that any employee of the city has to work in those conditions. And also, I believe WorkSafe will eventually become involved and we're going to be forced to do something without having a proper plan. We've already started that. And it's that, I think that was built in the 50s, Mr. Sims, that building, it's extremely old and, and, and it's not, we have to look after, I, and I agree with what Councilman, they're not sexy things as the mayor likes to say, but they're absolute necessities to keep the city running. We have, we, we need police, we need public works and they need to be in proper buildings. So I appreciate all the time Ms. Habkirk and uh, I think this is a great start. Thank you. And I'll turn it back to you. Oh, sorry, Mayor Krogh. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I mean, uh, obviously no good politician is going to turn down the opportunity to comment on the strategic plan today. Um, I'm reminded that when my wife and I first married, she was a primary school teacher before she went to law school, and the expectation was when they came in in grade one, many of them couldn't read, and by the end of the year, the expectation was that they could. Um, for me, a council term isn't much different in some respects. Uh, we should, uh, there's a certain expectation of what we hope to achieve and we lay that out in a strategic plan and hopefully by the end of four years we're either uh, able to say we accomplished uh, what we wanted to do or we didn't and, and here's the measures for doing so. Um, and therefore, I'm very supportive of the concept of simple and short. Uh, I'm getting to the stage of life where I understand Ronald Reagan now. If you can't put it in one page, don't bother, give it to me. Um, and, and maybe not quite that simplistic, but what are the things that we hope to achieve? Uh, the ongoing commitment, as Councillor Thorpe has pointed out, uh, and others, to ensuring that the services we deliver meet the expectations and the needs of the public. It's not very exciting. Uh, the knock isn't a very exciting pro project either, but as some have pointed out, when it collapses and you can't get any services out of the vehicles or the staff, or many of whom may be injured or dead as a result of our failure to replace the knock, uh, then expectations obviously will be somewhat different. So I'm supportive of where we're going. Um, obviously, there are some projects that have been mentioned here today that I think would uh, receive uh, what I will call not universal, but certainly substantial community support. Uh, and that may well be what we will settle on. Uh, some of these things, however, require cooperation with others beyond our control, and we need to be conscious of that and be respectful of uh, the contributions and can, uh, assistance and agreement of others in our community, and particularly around Sinemic First Nation. Uh, these are challenging times uh, with a lot of high feelings on both sides. Many Canadians uh, coming to grips with uh, the behavior, if you will, of their ancestors uh, that uh, spoke to the worst and speak to the worst aspects of colonialism. Uh, and Indigenous peoples uh, who, after several generations, many of whom continue to suffer the consequences of that. Uh, these are going to be challenging, but I think that a high-level document like this that speaks to those things that I think are not only necessary but realistic uh, is, is what the public should expect of us. And so that by the end of our term, maybe we'll be able to read, so to figuratively speaking, and the public will be able to read what we've presented and, and uh, proposed and, in fact, give us a, a pass into grade two. Thank you. Okay, see no other speakers. Ms. Hapker? Um, so I, I think I hear that you're all comfortable or all present or comfortable with a high-level document. I think I hear that the headings are still um, what you want to see. Correct me if I'm wrong about that. Um, 
I think maybe we could just go through it section by section. Um, I mean, there's some variance of opinion about whether or not maintaining and growing current services should be on its own, but I think I heard the majority of you say that you'd like to see that uh, remain as a separate section. Um, I think there's uh, broad agreement about the social health and public safety challenges. Um, the capital projects, I think I hear that you would like two more added. Um, what I can do is draft it that way. You can think about it and we can always take them out. Uh, again, sort of subject to funding and grants and all that because obviously all of these projects are significant. Um, in the implementing, uh, sorry, let me just go back capital projects. The, the reference to capital projects, all of those are going to be discussed in a process of prioritizing by council. So you're going to have the, you know, a much more detailed, much more intense discussion around what you prioritize and what you fund. And similarly, uh, with the implementing city action, uh, city plan action plans, there'll be a whole process around that where you will prioritize the recommendations coming out of that. I think I heard that there's broad agreement about adding the city plan goals to this high level document, so we can do that. And I think I heard that the communicating with the public is, remains a, a piece that you'd like to include there. So if I'm not right in those conclusions, maybe you can tell me. And I would just ask you, is there anything else at this point, anything that you think is missing or any other advice you'd like to give? Councillor Gezelbeck. Uh, thanks. Um, I've got a question for staff, nothing okay. for, okay. Um, entertain it now? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just in terms of the capital projects, like uh, there's quite a few on there. We've had conversations on all these ones. Um, how do we foresee stepping these items forward because there are financial constraints and probably capacity constraints. I, I'm not sure if we've got the ability to do all of these all at once. Yeah. So uh, that probably will be a bit of a prioritization exercise. And um, what are next steps that you foresee? Thank you, uh, through the chair, to Councillor Gesselbrack. So uh, Councillor proposing, or staff are proposing to schedule a special finance and audit committee for March 29th. You're gonna have a regular scheduled one this Wednesday, which is uh, full agenda and then a special one just to deal with the big fiscal conversation around debt and uh, unfunded projects. Um, and to uh, explain as best we can uh, where we are in, in the debt management sch scheme of things, what your debt philosophy as a council will be to inform your, your decision making as you go forward. So uh, we will also give a presentation on the status of the Nanaimo Operations Center, the RCMP complex, uh, the Waterfront Walkway uh, and the South End Community Centre are all unfunded major capital projects. There, there's a fifth one in the queue at some point in time in the 10 years, a new fire hall or a smaller, a smaller version of a fire hall to uh, augment the growth in incidents and calls. Uh, so there's a projection that will be at a call volume that we're going to need another standalone facility somewhere in the next 10 years. So that's on the radar. Those are the major unfunded capital that we're aware of at this stage. Um, so that's, that's, there's a process that we have to go through. We can, uh, we are going to, Ms. Gurry is going to be presenting a report on uh, the approval processes required to get uh, funding that way through alternate approval or uh, uh, referendums, those types of options. Um, there are timing issues around that, how much of that is going to happen in the next, this term and how much is forecast to maybe be longer. So those are the types of decisions I think that this council will be asked to look at and shepherd some of these projects along to some conclusion or so at least advance them to some stage. Um, so that, that's one category of capital. The second category is the ongoing capital prog program, which is a large number of smaller projects. The majority of those are built into engineering cycles of replacing pipes and that type of thing. And we can certainly share all that information with you. There's pages of small projects and what the engineering department uh, attempts to do is merge the need to replace that old asbestos main, water main pipe with surface works and that type of thing, so it aligns with things. So there's a there's a there's a whole sequence of things that go into that. Um, 
So last year, I think it was, and the year before, certainly, council had a session or two talking about capital projects that they were liking. And many of those were um, on the parks, recreation, and culture side. Um, but some of them were also on active transportation. Um, so we, we need to have a session with you in the next month uh, going through that capital program and seeing where, where, what, what are those types of projects that you would be interested in. I can give you some examples. The ones that were, came out of the product the last time, there was a, improvements to the stadium district was in there. I think Westwood, the uh, improvements to Westwood, the uh, Long Lake facility came out of that. Um, so there's been some projects came out of that system. Another thing that came up through budgeting, and I think we'd be curious to ask council about this, is investment in pedestrian and other active transportation facilities. Um, with extra funding coming from government, uh, this is an example of where some of that money could be put into those types of things. Um, so we're gonna be running a track all along here in terms of the, the on, on, I think one thing that's worked very, served council very well is a focus committee on finance and then Wednesday mornings once a month and you may have to have a couple more of those on the capital. So I think I'm hoping that over the next couple months you will have clarity on so, some of those smaller capital projects. I can think of a number of them myself, maybe paving neck point, <laughs> um, more, wa more accessible washrooms, uh, in places like Maffeo Sutton, um, you know, there's, 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 you probably have some thoughts in terms of smaller capital projects that are doable. And I know I, I often uh, remember the, the, what the mayor has said uh, a number of times is people, people want to see the return on investment for their tax dollar. And this is one area where you, it's easy to see, you can visualize if there's improvements taking place around the city. So. It doesn't all have to be big ones. So we're, we're gonna give you a process over the next couple of months through finance and audit on capital planning. And uh, that's that's coming. So it's starting as early as this week with your discussions around the 16 million that we received from uh, the government recently, how to allocate the surplus uh, on those types of things. So uh, lots of opportunity over the next two months, I would say on capital. Follow up? Uh, yeah, just follow up. Um, so just expand on that. That discussion. So there's these large ticket capital projects that are um, we need a discussion on. Um, you also mentioned some smaller item capital project investment. This is where um, my not concern or just curiosity is. I, I think we do have an official community plan that outlines what our objectives are, what we're trying to achieve, and I think that the capital projects, you know, need to align with that that vision, yep. and so. I think um, having you know a completely divorced process from our action planning with the OCP and capital projects outside of those big ticket items that I think need further thing um, kind of creates two parallel things where there's like a lack of coherence in terms of what we're trying to achieve as our overall objectives. And so um, my question is, when's the soonest that we can start getting the action plans in front of council yeah. from the OCP? W when can we expect that? I know it's been delayed, you know, no. different. There's, well, through the chair again to Council Guestbrook, there's a capacity problem for how many meetings exactly. uh, this committee has been able to meet. I mean, there's even been talk of reducing the number of times. We have so much to go over that we need at least two meetings a month, in my opinion, to support all the things that you need to get through. So the first, the next GPC, Governance and Priorities Committee, is scheduled to be the first dip into the uh, act, uh, to the uh, city plan action statements. So that's a uh, meeting on the 27th, I think it is, of March. That will be the first dedicated meeting date on action statements. And uh, Ms. Gurry is going to be bringing back a schedule as well because I think through that the uh, committee discussion, we wanted to get some, some consensus on topics in the sequence and when they'd be scheduled to bring forward for a six month period. So uh, all of the next sequence of GPCs are scheduled to be city plan uh, related and there might be other topics on there as well. So that's starting. I would say that um, that's a great comment and I think one of the words uh, that comes to my mind is alignment. We have the city plan, we have capital planning, we have the strategic plan. They're not all necessarily gonna fit perfectly together, even the org structure of the city to some extent. Uh, need to be aligned so that we see how these things are connected. I totally agree with your observation. If we're saying that uh, growth centers are where we want to see the population growing, that's probably where you want to 
be confident that you're investing capital dollars in those areas. Maybe if there's a South End Community Center, that's where you want to direct it to the community, to the uh, town center area, that type of thing, or sidewalk improvements and that type of thing. So there should be a link uh, through the capital, and we will make sure that we'll do our part to try to draw those linkages for you. But you're, that's a very astute observation. So. We've got different things going on all the time, but how do they align and link is always going to be a question with many of the decisions that you'll be making over this term. Uh, I've got other questions, but I'll Yeah, I'll, I'll come go back next to you round. after because we've got others here. Councillor Thorpe. Thank you, uh, Chair. Through you, <clears throat> back to Ms. Habkirk, who I think asked for any further comments on, on your summary of the document. Uh, a couple of things. Um, First of all, I heard a couple of councillors um, mention the idea of deleting uh, as unnecessary the we commit to mm -hmm. sections, and I, I don't know if I heard you comment on that, but I would add my voice to that. I find it unnecessarily restrictive, and I don't think it's necessary. So that's my comment on that. <clears throat> um, the uh, key capital projects, um, new police station, community centre in the south end, the uh, public works yard or operations center I, I see uh, as definitely crucial. I, I personally like the, uh, the including the statement about other smaller uh, capital improvements that may come up that are doable within our term. Um, so I would, I, would, uh, I would vote to keep that there if we were voting. Uh, and I certainly recognize, as Mr. Rudolph pointed out, the financial implications and the, and the uh, challenges that will be faced to, to accomplish these huge projects and, and many of them, most of them, if any of them, probably not achievable within our four year term, but we can certainly work towards them and make it clear that they are priorities. Uh, the other thing that I would take minor issue with the, what Mr. Rudolph just commented on, and, and I heard councillors at a recent uh, workshop suggest that we move away from the terminology of active transportation and, uh, and maybe focus on connectivity instead. I, th I think that would serve us better as we uh, look at our project, so I make that comment. And I think for now, that's about it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Perino, then Eastmere. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Chair. I, I just wanted, just before I make my comment, I wanna say I also agree with the comment that uh, Councillor Thorpe said about connectivity versus active uh, transportation, because I think it, it just expands the, the whole transportation issue. I, the, the piece, I wanted to actually comment on something that you said, Chair, and, and I certainly agree with you, and I, you know, the, the projects of One Port Drive and the walkway, hugely expensive, but the opportunities are endless, and there are opportunities from, uh, from all levels of government as far as the funding opportunities, and I think, I, I would rather do the work up front to look at the opportunity and work with, uh, obviously, the Sinema First Nations and the Port Authorities to see where those opportunities can go before we turn it down. So I don't want to take it off because we think it's expensive. I'd rather, you know, get it to, right in front of the public and let the public say, no, it's too expensive. That's up for them to decide through referendum or an alternate approval process. So I. I, I want to see something that the public can uh, have an opportunity to grow from in the downtown core, and one port drive will bring investment opportunity that we can't even imagine today because it's such a long-term goal. And the walkway is about bringing the, the tourism sector, you know, giving it more opportunity to grow and advance and bringing the, it's, it's just, there's so many positives to this. I think we, no matter what the cost, we can turn it down later if we have to, but I want to certainly add that now. And I also agree to uh, Ms. Hapkirk that, it, that we commit to can be removed. But one last comment, and this is a question. I don't know the answer to this question, but I want to just uh, pose it, and that is we use the term 2023 to 2026 council priorities. Should we use the term priorities versus goals? Or should we have the term goals as well as priorities. There's a difference, and I just, it, it's just a question I'm only asking. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can thank I, you. I have Councillor Eastmere. Uh, thank you. Um, in the opening message from Mayor and Council, I would like to see um, a land acknowledgement and an, an acknowledgement of the importance of our relationship with this Nanaimo First Nation um, built into that message. Um, 
As far as council priorities, uh, one of the, I'd say, few changes we made to the budget uh, as presented to us was that we increased the allocation for pedestrian improvements from 300000 to a million dollars. So I really think that is a strong signal of our um, priority around walkability. And uh, so I would like to see that reflected and just flag that as, as being a, a priority for all of council. Who, who are you pointing to? Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to see if Ms. Hapkirk had anything to add to what well, I've got she's more speakers. Heard. Okay. Councillor Manley. Thank you, Chair. Um, I agree with uh, Councillor Eastmere about the, the opening message, and I'd also like to see it reflect that we're in a time where we're actually seeing climate change and the effects of climate change and the need to mitigate and adapt. And, um, it, you know, Chair, you brought this up in terms of the walkway, the waterfront walkway, that that is something we, if we're going to be doing a project like that, we're going to need to plan around uh, sea level rise because that's a reality now. And uh, king tides and sea level rise and the combination of, of um, different types of, of storms at the same time are going to have an impact on anything that we do along our waterfront. And so um, we, our, plan, our plans and, and priorities need to reflect the fact that we are in a time of climate change and we need to, we need to uh, prepare for that. And that's why you know, we, we spent more money on firefighters uh, from my perspective that uh, we do need to be prepared for interface fires. We do need to pre be prepared for wildfires in our region. Um, and, and we need to uh, ensure that any, any planning and uh, priorities that we have reflect the fact that we are in a, in a changing time and a whole new world. Thank you. Mayor Krogh. Okay, I'll add my two cents now, and then I'll oh, go ahead. Can I can I respond to the two last comments? Sure. Just one, because uh, Councillor Perino had a specific mm -hmm. question. So just um, uh, whether we would use word goals or priorities. First of all, I think there's a lot of confusion what go goals are, or there's a variety of interpretations of what a goal is, and that's why I would suggest to you that you use priorities. Mm -hmm. These are the priorities. These are the things that you think are most important. You know, full stop. Um, and then just to uh, Councillor Manley's comments about climate, uh, if we include the five city plan goals, one of which is green and animal resilient and regenerative ecosystems and includes greenhouse gas, climate adaptation and hazard mitigation, is that enough or do you want, uh, would you recommend we include something in the message from council about um, climate adaptation and mitigation and um, that you had one other thing. Uh, oh, emergency preparedness. Go ahead, Councillor. Just a minute. I have to turn you on. Okay. I think referencing them in in the message is important uh, because we are in changing times, and it it, it wouldn't add that much more. But it it is mm -hmm. a reflection on what we need to be thinking about as we move forward. Mm -hmm. So, if I could, Madam Chair, there would be. I think I've heard three uh, additions to the message. One would be uh, something around First Nations, land acknowledgement, reconciliation. Secondly, the suggestion to have climate adaptation, mitigation, and emergency preparedness added to the message from Council. Is there agreement about that? Is there comfort with that? I see sort of, I think, the majority of nodding heads, sort of. We'll draft something, and then if you want to pull back, we can, we can do that. I would say that it's already in the OCP, so it's, it, it, I don't see it as an issue putting in that because the OCP addresses that continually. So I'm just going to add my two cents now. Um, going back to um, like adding the two more into the, the walkway and number one Port Drive. I believe Port Drive is looked after in significant downtown capital investments. I think it's covered off there. 
And I think there's much bigger issues at play that we, we can't go into right now, but uh, I also hear from many, many of, of the people I talk to, they're tired of all the money put into downtown and, and the rest of the area is being forgotten about, such as the South End neighborhood. So just something to think about, that we have to look at the whole city as a core. Um, the other issue around that too is our staff capacity. They can't take on that many projects. That's a lot of projects, I believe, for our staff to try and wheel around. And I also know, having sat at this council twice before, that every time there are grants available, our, our uh, team scrambles to bring it forward to, to, to council immediately. So I don't see that as being an issue of, of missing out on grants because our staff is very good at that. Anytime they see a green infrastructure grant or whatever, they do have projects ready to bring forward to us using those dollars. So I'm not concerned about losing out on any federal or provincial grants. Um, again, I think this captures basically what we're looking for because so long as staff knows what, what the priorities are, that's what matters because they'll do their plans are based around that and they will align with both. And I think the priorities and the uh, OCP pretty well align, so I don't see a big issue there. Oh, Councilor Gessenbrock. Uh, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> um, my, my one question is just around the category maintaining and growing current services. Um, as a communication tool to the general public, uh, saying that we're focusing on that, you know, it's six and one, half a dozen for me, but it's always a good thing to say that, you know, we're, it's, uh, it's something that we're maintaining. My question around uh, having this item as a strategic priority item um, is to staff, do you foresee having a separate stream, like, conversation around this, presentations to uh, finance and audit, GPC session on this item, and a different um, pacing in terms of when it appears before council for decisions on the strategic item, or is this something uh, that is captured within the action planning process of our OCP? Because I, I, I don't think I'm incorrect in saying that our basic services were all captured within OCP policy, um, and that as part of the action plans that came before council, those would be things that are coming forward around the maintenance and you know ensuring that our services are, are meeting the, the needs both you know environmentally and socially of our, of our services. So it's just a question, Mr. Rudolph. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Councillor Gesselbrecht. Well, my first response would be the budget, the annual budget cycle is the opportunity for countless staff to present business plans articulating uh, additional staff and resources necessary to maintain service levels. So you can expect that that would continue uh, every year. That's the mechanism to bring forward additional resources. And as I said during last fall's business planning process, we basically are growing a small town every year. Uh, in this community, so how many staff are, does a small town have? So we're, we're we're going to expect that we need that, and we're going to expect that we need, uh, with growth, periodically a new fire hall. So it's just inevitable that you're going to need that, or you're going to need a new library, or something to that effect. Uh, so uh, that's sort of what I think is being meant by maintaining services. We saw with the fire service this fall. An, uh, an identification that we were falling behind, behind in a number of firefighters. And we'd slipped into a, a, an area where we needed to go, uh, you know, and, and add resources to that. So that's still maintaining core services, but every once in a while there's a lift. Where my question is, is, you know, we're not in a static world and things change. And we saw, we didn't envisage that we'd have 12 community safety officers a year ago. Uh, that's new space that we've gotten into, and you can expect those conversations and those issues will emerge either from staff or from council themselves that will say this is space here that we, uh, we find ourselves going to, and that's a discussion that council's going to have to have. This is staying true to what we do, but it's the intent of this to say we're not getting into other territory, and staff can't guarantee that that won't always be the case because there are things that happen, I see uh, the use of uh, technology really driving uh, people's expectations that we're going to be doing more. Uh, and, you know, more online services, more everything. So uh, it's not only maintaining, I think there's a, a growing expectation of improvements in certain areas. We're gonna move 
better. We're going to be way better on building permits. Uh, we're going to have software that will enable that process. So we, we try to maintain and enhance where we can. So it's not good enough just to be where, where, we're, at, where we're at. We have to get better at a lot of things because I think the world is forcing us to do that. And then there's the whole business of uh, other issues that are creep into the forte of the council. And that's a challenge. And I think council will always struggle, always have that conversation. I don't know if you want to go there today on that subject matter, but it is there and you can't ignore it. And we're finding ways to get there, I guess, in terms of partnerships or funding agencies like the, uh, the SPO or the Prosperity Corporation or the Tourism Society or a myriad of agencies that provide volunteer and arts and culture and services to the community. And we, the council's very generous with its uh, allocation of funding to do that. But are those core services? I don't know. It's a, it's a broad subject, so I think it's, it's one that could be explored further by council as to what your intentions are by this section. Follow up. Uh, a, f a follow up on that. I guess strategically, outside of the 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 new process we're going to have around action plan, the OCP action plans. Do you foresee, from what we've done the last four years, a strategic change with this heading in how we go about it? Because, like, I guess from my experience. We have been maintaining and growing current services as you know different items emerge. We are trying to make sure that we've got enough uh, police, fire, ambulance, right. water, to make sure that we're keeping up with the number and like our, our budgeting process reflects that. And maybe we haven't overtly made that uh, a policy of what we're trying to do as a council. And, and and here it's tipping its hat. But do you see us strategically shifting any processes in terms of accomplishing that that item? Uh, through the councillor, well, I, I think uh, city plan will inform business plans for this fall. If council is very determined to, to put emphasis on some of the actions in there and they're not, we're not able to do that without reallocating resources, then I think that will inform our business plans, certainly in the planning department and parks, rec, and culture and that type of thing. Um, so that that's sort of one area that we're going to find ourselves going into. I mean, if council... Uh, I'm not sure if I, what what would you like me to say? I guess well, I, I guess like outside of what the process that we have with like the action plans coming forth, yeah. city plan and our annual budgeting cycle and what we've done by saying we're maintaining and growing current services, are we doing any different thing, different, better, more than what we were doing two years ago? No, but it's reinform it's informing us that you're, you're, determined to maintain what we do and not cut services. Right, right. We're not being like, going to keep the pools uh, open, for yeah. example. I, or are you going to maintain garbage collection at that, that level? Or are you going to find yourselves you know, into difficult discussions about maybe having to reduce services in certain areas? And so, understood. So it's a, a reaffirmation, tipping yeah. our hat and communicating yeah. that, you know, uh, formally or just intentionally. I understand. Thank you. I was going to say, for me, this is the most important priority we have because that's our core responsibilities. And it's just, I think, just saying, reaffirming that we're going to commit to waterways, transport. It doesn't matter if it's changing our policies so long as we continue to commit to, to doing what we're actually elected to do, which is deliver our five core responsibilities. So to me, I thought that was captured it pretty good. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Um, seeing no other speakers, I will turn it back to Ms. Habkirk. I think uh, unless there's more uh, advice you'd like to offer me, and I, I welcome it. Um, I, I push your push your mic. I've got a couple more questions for staff, but I can. Okay, well, yeah, we'll wait to see. Ms. Habkirk, do you have more on on your presentation? Because we can do the staff thing at the end of the day, so that would free you. Yeah. No, not unless there's uh, more guidance that you council wants to give me about, uh, you know, how we go about drafting the second no, go no, round of this. Not seeing any other speakers, so um, I'll turn back to Council Gilbrook. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, just uh, on, on the other strategic priority of, of social health, public safety challenges, I, I know we've entered into the conversation. It, it is captured in our OCP um, and, uh, and that probably the action planning process. Um, I agree that it needs you know, added effort and, and focus on it, so I think it's a great strategic item. Um, we initially had some discussion on this in terms of what are we going to be doing around housing differently or do we want to get into it or out of it. Um, just in terms of this as a strategic item, do you foresee having a session where we're going to have get more into sort of like what type of policies we're going to be looking at uh, on this coming up? 
and Mr. Rudolph. Um, well, that through the chair again, that's a, that's an interesting question. I think if we're putting so many eggs in the city plan basket, exactly. we're, we're, we're going to have a challenge getting through all those topics just in one meeting or two. You know, you're going to have to pull out a couple of those topics and say, no, we need to spend more time on this. Uh, housing is clearly one, uh, and there's others. The environment and you know, there's going to be things where Maybe the first go at that, going through that long list of action statements, you're particularly interested in years two to four, or one to four, and in that, there's certain topics that we, we want to spend time on. Public safety, housing, uh, you know, social issues, all those issues that are attached there. So, um, and then, I, you know, what we see is you need to have time to discuss and we, staff can bring information, but council has to give direction on those types of things. So I, again, is housing something that council wants to put more emphasis on, generally speaking? Um, that's a big topic. Uh, I know uh, the former mayor of Victoria has now been seconded to the government to work just on the middle income housing. That's the huge challenge right now is affordability for a whole pile of people. So, uh, and council, I know council is interested in that. And, it, it's an ongoing thing. So uh, I don't think we should just say a city plan is going to solve everything. It may be you're going to have to pull things out and work on them. Now, that gets into do you have a, se a separate committee or do you do it all at GPC? You're probably going to find yourself having three meetings a week. If you, so so you got to find a way to narrow this down to those few topics that you really want to do a deep dive on and, and then ask for the ongoing information because there's lots of stuff that's going to come forward to council. <coughs> it really would be helpful for council to say, you know what? These are the top five <laughs> and uh, priority areas, and then we can unpack those systematically. And I think the city plan uh, is a very large document with dozens, if not more, actions in there. I think we have to to get effective uh, your pro you know, on certain topics, and you've noted some, maybe some properties. And the downtown is an area. Uh, uh, it would just be ultimately. I think you need to get there in terms of being very focused. And so as the mayor says, so you've got a very clear number of topics that you, you know you're gonna be working on in addition to a, 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 you know, quite a few other ones. So uh, that would be my goal with Follow this up. is to get to a shorter list. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I think just, to, just wanted to hear more uh, on the sort of processing operationally of how this would come forward. And, and I think um, I agree 100%, like the, the social health, safety, public safety challenges, I think it's one of those topics even though it's covering the OCP, we do need to like really get into it and prioritize it early too out of the gates. And so, you know, my would hope would be in the next month or so to be able to have like a focus session on this. Cause I don't think that, I think it's one of those areas where there is gonna be some debate about council and, and, and what direction we'll look at. And um, so I was just question on how you were looking at- I, Ms. Gurry has the answer. I, yeah, Mr. Lindsay is scheduled to come to council on the 27th with an update on the implementation of the downtown safety action plan. That was the tentative date. Not sure that's what he was about to say. Ms. Gurry? Uh, yeah, thank you, um, Madam Chair, and through you to Council Gus Brock and further to what Mr. Rudolph just said. Yes, Mr. Lindsay's team and him are coming on the 27th um, to um, also talk on the first action item as well. Um, the first action, um, the group, uh, the goals in the um, city plan, um, a healthy Nanaimo actions is coming on the 27th. And then the next three GPCs after that, all the way to the end of May, are covering off of the, um, the goal and the action items. So tentatively, we have scheduled that for March 27th, then coming, um, April 24th is City Plan C1 and C2, and then May 23rd, 29th, no, sorry, May 8th, GPC is City Plan C4, C5, D, and E, whatever those okay. mean right yeah, now. Yeah, that's okay. So we, we understand they're coming up. The schedule, so. great. Yeah, no, yeah. thank you. Okay, I'm going to go to <clears throat> Councilor Perino. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. A, a question that well, just before I ask the question, I uh, comment to uh, Mr. Rudolph, you know, it's a four-year plan, so we don't need answers to everything right now. I, I certainly understand that we're going to look at some, some of our priorities this year, some next year, some the following year, so it's okay. We, we've only got four years. We can't accomplish everything, but if we can get some things started, you know, have a plan for the future, that's good enough, certainly, I think, for me. The, the question that I have is how are we going to present this 
to the public as a document, uh, Ms. Hepker, could, are we going to are we going to just put it onto our website? Are we going to put it in the newspaper? Is, is there a sort of a plan about how to present this? Because it, it needs to be uh, certainly showcased as a document that, that we would like to see get accomplished during our term. So how do we, how do, we do that as far as the communication piece? I, I'll leave that to Jake. We really haven't discussed that. Uh, it needs to be, the content needs to be finalized and then it okay. needs to be designed. And then uh, I don't, I'm not sure what you've done in the past and what your well, on the website. preferences. I hope it's a little bit more than just the website. No, <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a communication plan uh -huh. that needs to be done to align with this. And I think it's one of the themes that I'm hearing from council. Period. Exactly. It's the communication coming out from council Good. at the council table is a constant theme of uh, we need to do better and more. Uh, there's lots of communication from the city, but this, the one-pagers on all these major topics and the ongoing uh, communication out there, what is the situation and what the city is doing and, and what others are doing is, and th this is just one document that, will, will, that needs to get shared and put out there and, and, and spoken to by the mayor at the Rotary Clubs and <laughs> others, uh, Sounds the, good. You know, the State of the <laughs> Union, I think. Uh, Chamber luncheon coming up in next month where the city's update will be provided by the mayor. And, and uh, so just being really good at and having speaking the same message from council on all these things is really important. And staff and make, make sure our staff are understanding what these priorities are and so on. So Great, thank you. Councilor Thorpe. Thank you, Chair. Uh, through you uh, to Ms. Habkirk. Uh, Again, thanks for your work on this document. My question is similar to that of Councillor Perino's, and it's just regarding next steps. Uh, you're going to go away, uh, take our comments under advisement, and presumably come back to us with another uh, update or version of this document, and will that be presented, do we know, at, a, at another GPC or to Council, or do we, have we uh, determined what next steps will be? Mr. Rudolph? Your Worship, and uh, I would suggest there'd be another meeting like this uh, until you get it to a stage where you want to have a conversation at a council meeting, which is really that hopefully to approve of it. So uh, our next GPC is pretty full. Uh, I'd be surprised if you actually get through it. So it'll be this, we are challenged for dates because of Monday holidays in the next couple of months. So we may have to find some extra dates for council. I would hope we could do that uh, to, uh, to make progress on some of these topics. So right now it would come back as another iteration of this very preliminary draft that was circulated to you. And uh, we could do that at pretty quick notice, but again, it's finding the time in, this, in your calendars to do that. Okay, thank you. And then once, once council is happy with the, uh, the changes that are made, I guess personally, I would like to see it uh, presented to the public in, in the format of a presentation to council. An open meeting and uh, and uh, uh, have a, a a chance to uh, to comment on it or or applaud it or or whatever at that point. But part of the communication strategy would be an open meeting to share this document with the public. Thank you, Councillor Dieselbrock. Um, <laughs> These devices. I just saw a picture of Joe Biden just say sign and it completely zapped what uh, my question had. <laughs> God damn. Um, I didn't know Alzheimer's was so <laughs> I'm so sorry. It'll it'll come back here, but uh, yeah, fortunate. Seeing no other speakers. Anything further? So I guess we're at question period then. There's none for question period. Um, are we move, are we going back into camera? Or are we fine just to move for adjournment? I think we're good just for adjournment. Okay, um, Councillor Hammonds moves for adjournment. Seconder, Councillor Manley, all in favor? Most passes. Done for the day. Uh, actually, Madam Chair, there is still an open, closed meeting. So I think you were recessed from this morning's meeting, and you didn't uh, complete that. So I think there's a need to. Go at least well, that's what I asked and everybody said no. But not, it didn't need to go uh, action in this meeting to go back into it. It just would be there anyway from the previous meeting. 